Does everyone in Louisiana drink all the time? Does everybody have each other's back? And does everyone in Louisiana have a laissez-faire attitude? We're gonna go over those tidbits and a whole lot more. So grab a daiquiri and some crawdaddies. We're gonna unbox the state of Louisiana. Uh, what's going on here? Looks like they're setting up crawfish traps. Yum. That means it must be springtime. Everyone in Louisiana loves springtime. The weather isn't too muggy. There's no hurricanes coming yet. And of course, it's crawfish season. They love their crawfish here, just like they love their nature and their culture too. But Louisiana is much more than swampy crawfish stew. It's actually a really super diverse state with lots of tough folks and there's some real issues here too. It's kind of like a foreign country within the United States. In order to really get to know the state of Louisiana though, we have to look at the whole state and explore each and every area. This is Louisiana. Now as you can see there's a lot of different regions in this state. In fact this might be the most diverse state when it comes to region by region differences. First off they don't use counties here, they're called parishes. And just about every parish has its own distinct culture and way of life and even accent. If you moved here, you'd likely be a little overwhelmed with the differences from region to region. Now we're gonna begin up here in northern Louisiana. Now way up here is way different than the southern part of the state. Many say northern Louisiana is an extension of Arkansas. There's a ton of farmland up here and it's really rural. And this whole space is where all the rednecks duck hunt and deer hunt. I mean, this is a sportsman's paradise. They filmed Duck Dynasty up here, if that gives you an idea on what a northern Louisiana redneck's like. Up here, it's more Confederate flags and, sadly, more racist people when compared to southern Louisiana. In northern Louisiana, folks have a typical southern country kind of accent, while the further south you get in the state, the more folks sound like they have marbles in their mouth. It's also far more southern Baptist up here, while southern Louisiana is more Catholic. Shreveport's the biggest city up north. It's sort of like Texas more than anything else. It's not a very nice place to live, sadly, with lots of rundown areas, but they're trying to fix things up a little bit now. Crime is really high here, even for Louisiana standards. They have a nice boardwalk there along the Red River, though. Moving along I-20, we come to Ruston, which is home to Louisiana Tech University. Now, this is a pretty cool place to live, perhaps the best place in northern Louisiana to call home, at least for families. It's a lot safer than most other areas up here. Monroe is another rundown place with high crime. In fact, it's the fifth most dangerous place in the whole state and the third most violent place you can live in Louisiana. Not a good place to settle down, they say. Now way up here is Bastrop. This place is even more dangerous than Monroe is. Are we seeing a pattern already? In this little town of 10,000 people, you'll see a ton of break-ins and robberies. Statistically, you have about a one in 12 chance of being robbed every single year. Can you believe that? One somewhat reputable source called Bastrop, the worst place you can live in the whole state, people. A lot of people are leaving Bastrop right now. The poverty rate is nearly 50%. Much of that's due to a loss of jobs, particularly a loss of paper mill and poultry jobs. Benton, a community north of Shreveport, also lost a lot of energy jobs, but we're gonna see that's a pretty common theme in this state. Kind of a boom or bust mentality around here. Now the rest of this area is back roads and small towns, smallish farms, bad internet connections, and poor cell phone reception. Lots of poor folks. Super great people though. The cost of living is really low out in the northern Louisiana sticks, but car insurance rates are through the roof here for some reason. Now over here on the eastern side of the state along the Mississippi River, there's lots of plantation homes and agriculture. It's very poor and isolated way out here with small towns and communities of under 2,000 people. Many have a Dollar General and fast food restaurants, but that's just about it. It's very sad. Madison Parish ranks as the worst county in the whole state, where the unemployment rate is twice the national average, and one in three people lives below the poverty line. Many live on about $800 a month. Tallulah is the biggest city out this way, a city of about 7,300 people and dropping 20% every decade. It's also very sad. Now, a lot of Louisiana's poor, but we can't knock them for that. It's the fourth poorest state overall, but there's something to be said about poverty in Louisiana that's different. While a lot of the poor folks out in the sticks don't have a lot in the bank, it seems that their generational poverty is almost a way of life. You hear about Louisiana residents being happy 
I mean, not too long ago, Harvard did a study on the happiest cities in the country, and five of those cities are in Louisiana. Well, if you know folks who live in Louisiana, you know that when they're not dealing with hurricanes or oil spills or alligators, life there is good and they are proud to say so. Some Harvard and British Columbia researchers know it now. When they were compiling a list of the happiest cities in the U.S., they discovered they were all in one state. The top five, Lafayette, Houma, Shreveport, Baton Rouge, Alexandria, all in Louisiana. Proof that gumbo and Zydeco and a good Cajun accent make people happy. So it seems that money doesn't always equal happiness here in the Bayou State. They're a tough group, and they rely on their faith in God, their own self-reliance, and often each other to get through the tough times. Music and food and alcohol also help, and sadly, drugs are a coping mechanism too. But I spoke with one resident of Alexandria, a guy named Brandon, who's 21. He told me that a lot of the younger generation in Louisiana is broke, but not happy. There's a ton of jobs here, but this new generation doesn't want a blue collar plant job, or they can't pass the drug tests to obtain them. Here in Louisiana, you either have to suck it up and get a plant job and live a good life, or you wind up turning to drugs. Some of the younger kids wind up working minimum wage jobs with the hope of saving enough to leave this state for places like Houston, or they just run off with the army. Brandon told me his friend said that being in Afghanistan was better than living in central Louisiana, and that is just terrible. So for a lot of the youth in the larger cities in Louisiana, places like Alexandria, that poverty isn't always reflected with a smile. Alexandria proper is the second most dangerous place in the state and on paper has the most property crimes per capita. That's just terrible. Another community in central Louisiana that's struggling is Natchitoches, which is also very poor and dangerous. Now over here on the western side of the state, it's more smaller communities with little opportunity. This is perhaps the most conservative region in this entire state, which is very conservative. That's mostly because of the state's highly religious population and because of its dependency on gas and oil. It's kind of a weird thing going on down there right now since Louisiana is led by John Bell Edwards, who is a Catholic Southern Democrat who is very pro-life and pro-gun. The Western region is dominated by Lake Charles, the sixth largest city in the state, where 77,000 people call home. Now this area is kind of the opposite of all the areas we talked about already. There's a lot of opportunities down here to make a living. Here, industrial jobs in the energy sector have been on a roll, and as a result, there's a lot of new growth. But as this state's seen in the past, oil and gas jobs tend to go in global cycles. And there's a worry this job growth may peak soon, and that might send even more people out of the state, which has been a growing problem. Of all U.S. states, Louisiana has lost the fourth most people. It's not a lot. It's minus 10,000 residents, but most other states are growing. In Louisiana, it's the small towns that are shrinking, mostly because of a very cyclical job cycle. Lake Charles has been described as somewhat boring and somewhat dangerous. There's a lot of gambling here, and as you are likely aware, this part of the state's been hit hard by hurricanes over the last few years. Now that's something that has impacted this state more than any other, and another reason for this state's population decline. But I promise, the state of Louisiana does have some bright spots. Places like New Orleans, Baton Rouge, and Lafayette continue to grow and thrive. Lafayette's a neat city, home to 126,000 people. It was growing really fast since the 60s, but the population peaked about a decade ago. It's home to the University of Louisiana, and it has a cute, historic little area. There's a good music scene here and lots of festivals. Louisiana folks love them some festivals. There's shrimp festivals, frog festivals, rice festivals, and even daiquiri festivals. You don't know what a daiquiri is? Move here and you'll get hooked. Just look at this map of all the daiquiri locations in this one area alone. Daiquiris are frozen drinks with rum and sugar in them. They come in many flavors, like mango and peach and pina colada and strawberry. They're very popular here. The state even has drive through daiquiris where you can get them to go. You're not supposed to open them up until you get home, but... Of course, drinking booze is a big deal here in Louisiana. They get their vitamin B here, fella. That's vitamin booze. Supposedly, it's only the 15th drunk estate, but come on now. There's always a reason to drink here. A funeral, a wedding, a festival, a hurricane. And of course, the food here is very well known for being perhaps the most unique cuisine in the nation. It's the jambalaya, the po'boys, the crawfish, the gumbo, and every region has a different twist on how they prepare their food. Like, you can tell who's a Creole and who's a Cajun based on if they put tomato in their food. Crawfish season is every spring, and people here get really excited about their crawfish boils. Boudin's a big deal too. It's a pork and rice sausage mix that you can even find in gas stations. Did you know Louisiana's in the top 10 for obesity rates? I, 
I think I did know that, Mappy. They tend to eat a lot of food and they drink a lot and a lot of people down here don't exercise as much as they should. That's also why it leads the nation in stuff like diabetes and heart disease. Hey, what's burning in here? Mappy, your mouth is on fire. Have you been eating Cajun food again? Here, let me help. There you go, Mappy. Hopefully that helps. <laughs> I keep telling you, stop eating all that spicy food. Now we could do a whole video on just the Louisiana culture alone. Of course, jazz is a big deal here. And you may not know that this state was the birthplace to opera and zydeco, a music genre that's rhythm and bluesy. And there's a music style here called swamp pop, which has a cult following. Yes, there's something called swamp pop. Around the Lafayette area are a few communities of note. New Iberia was a booming town in the 50s and 60s, and now it's a complete wreck. And Opelousas is a complete wreck too. It's actually the most dangerous place in this whole state. What is going on there? Another of this state's bright spots would be here in Baton Rouge, which is the melting pot for all of Louisiana. It is the state capital. People from northern and southern parts of the state all kind of commingle here. There's a lot of business folks, government types, and college kids over at LSU. It's fairly dangerous, but not over the top. But the west side of town, your campus, and along the Mississippi is the worst part of town. The further east you go, closer to Denham Springs and into the eastern burbs, and it gets way nicer. Places across the river in areas like Addis and Plaquemine are also much better too. Baton Rouge is a tight-knit college town where football, especially LSU football, rules the day. It's actually thriving here with new business growth in the form of energy jobs and petrochemical companies along with healthcare and biofarm. There's even a little bit of an emerging tech scene here. Baton Rouge is still finding its identity, but it seems to be on the rise. Just southeast of Baton Rouge is Ascension Parish, where petrochemical jobs are bringing in tons of jobs and new housing developments, but all this new growth is adding to the area's flooding woes. Now we are firmly in the southern part of the state now. Outside of Baton Rouge and New Orleans down here is a far different culture than the stuff we saw up north. This is Cajun and Creole and crawfish farm country. It's much more swampy and buggy down here, but the culture down here is what really stands out. All the Catholics and the music and food and the mix of ethnicities from Europe and Canada and Central America and the Caribbean make this part of the state very unique. Lots of people say Southern Louisiana doesn't even belong in the South at all. Over here in this part of the state, it's much more rural farmland that resembles Mississippi in many ways. Not much here, but some smaller cities and towns. Bogalusa is kind of a dump. Sorry if you live there. But as you get closer to Link Pontchartrain, now you're in the New Orleans metro area. Yay! This whole area here on the northern banks of Lake Pontchartrain is where all the middle to upper middle class folks live who think they're too good to live in New Orleans proper. Decent areas, it's pretty safe over there. Places like Madisonville, Mandeville, Lacombe, and all the way over to Slidell. Now cross that 24 mile bridge and you come into downtown New Orleans. Now this is a very complex community. Of course, this is a pretty dangerous city, especially on the city's east side. A lot of people know about all the crap that happens near the ninth ward over here. Downtown itself can be dangerous as well, with a lot of homeless and drug users preying on unsuspecting tourists and drunk people. But it's not terrible here as long as you stay out of the alleyways after dark. A lot of New Orleans is a tourist town rooted in culture, where you can find some of the best music and food and scary voodoo haunted stuff in the country. Of course it's a party town, we all know about Mardi Gras, and everybody here loves the Saints. But it's also sort of becoming a bit of a technology hub, at least according to one website I had never heard of. Amazon put a factory in here. Tulane and Loyola turn out some smart people. Another website I've never heard of called New Orleans the best city in the nation for small businesses. And that is just so great. Good for you guys. New Orleans is a great place for really young people who want to party or wealthy older people who can afford homes that don't have water damage. Of course, Hurricane Katrina ran off about half the population and many of those folks are never coming back. On the western fringes of New Orleans are several nice safe areas to raise a family in. Those would be places like Metairie, Elmwood, and Kenner. Now, as you go into the far southern reaches of this state, you get into an area with, you guessed it, a whole nother culture. This is the Atchafalaya Basin and the Mississippi Delta, pal. It's bayou, swamps, and marshes with smaller towns sprinkled in down here. The whole area changes all the time with every big storm and rising seawater. And we talked about the rednecks up north. Down here is an area where you'll find a lot of Louisiana coon asses. Now that's a term they call themselves. Don't blame me. It's actually not really an offensive term. It's kind of an endearing one. They're all over the state. Come on now, everybody in the state's at least a quarter coon ass. Louisiana coon asses way down the bayous eat frog legs and catch alligators. 
If you've seen the show Swamp People, you know what I'm talking about. But don't let that term nor the looks of this place fool you. There's a lot of sneaky coon ass millionaires down here. Folks who dress like they're mechanics, who live in homes that look like a dump and who drive dirty old pickups. A lot of these folks have a lot of money. People in Baton Rouge let you know they have money. Folks down here are good at hiding it. Great people, good values in places like Homa and Thibodeau, Grand Isle, all the way down to the end of the earth. There's a lot of fishermen down here, folks who work on boats and lots of people who work for various oil platforms offshore. Of course, oil is a huge part of the state's culture and economic might. While many think Louisiana is a poor state, it's actually extraordinarily rich in resources. It's number two in crude oil refining, number four in natural gas production, number three in chemical production, number one for ports, number one for salt, number two for sugar, and number three for rice. More money comes from around the world through Louisiana than just about any other state. You could consider Louisiana the Silicon Valley for energy and chemical production. However, Louisiana ranks 49th for poverty, 47th for household incomes, 47th for food insecurity, and last for income gap. It's a really unhealthy state and one that's very polluted. And it's the fourth most dangerous state in the country. And I'm not done. The public schools rank in the bottom three in the nation and the state ranks dead last for social and economic outcomes. 50th people, despite all that wealth. So if Louisiana is rich, then why is it so poor? It's very complicated, but a lot of it has to do with corporate subsidies. This graph shows Louisiana gives far more money to corporations than any other state does. Despite the fact that these huge companies make so much money and skate on taxes, they do give back some of their untaxable profits to the local communities. Some of it. But where the heck's the money going? Louisiana, a state with so much culture and wealth, and yet one that remains so poor and dangerous. It's a tough as nails, thick skin crowd where family ties run deep. They're very open, friendly, welcoming, and warm. They're loyal and they're proud. There's a lot of energy and passion in so many parts of this state. They look out for each other through everyday setbacks. The culture here is strong and deeper than you and I will ever really understand. And they're so likely to jump in and lend a hand and look out for each other. Look at the state flag. It's representative of how the people of Louisiana are. The pelican has blood drops on it. Pelicans are known to pierce their own skin and sacrifice their own blood to their young during tough times. That's kind of symbolic of how folks across this state look out for one another. They're all in it together to help each other out during unpredictable times down here. Doesn't matter who's poor and who isn't. Okay, so we did a pretty good job of unboxing the state of Louisiana, didn't we? Yes, we did. It's a really complex state with a lot of culture and history and it's just so vast. We could have gone and on and on and on and on and on and talked about all the different cultures and the ethnicities and the Creoles and the Cajuns and the Acadians and everything, but we have to go. There's a crawfish boil about to start and I got some heads I gotta suck. Louisiana takes a lot of time fighting crime, fighting crime. Coon ass people always looking out, helping out their friends. Oil's gonna bring the money, and Mardi Gras brings all the people. Louisiana has a lot of hurricanes. Louisiana has a lot of fun parades. Louisiana Louisiana has a lot of culture waves. Come eat some crawfish and vignettes right away. Thanks to Rod, Eddie, and Christina for their help in making this video. Awesome Louisianans who I now consider my friends. Thanks guys. You guys rock. Keep in touch. And a big thanks to Jason Hoffman over at 504 Road Trips for his amazing drives throughout Louisiana. He has a super cool channel that you should subscribe to. The link is in the description. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching. And remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.